How well does a homemade do-it-yourself turbo system work for a five liter Mustang? Let's find out. In this video, I'll show you how I built a do-it-yourself custom single turbo system for a five liter Mustang engine. Using the stock exhaust manifold or shorty headers, all you have to do is route that exhaust to a custom Y pipe to mount the turbo. Although we built it for the engine dyno, you can just as easily assemble the same thing to fit in your chassis. In fact, it doesn't even have to be for a five liter Mustang engine. This setup works for any motor. All you need are exhaust manifolds. Route that exhaust to a custom Y pipe, mount the turbo, and you're ready to go. We'll show you how much power this combination makes. But the question is, will the stock bottom end hold up to the turbo setup? Before that, we even ran nitro. Did it all work? Let's get going. Okay guys, before we get to the videos on the buildup and the testing of the nitrous on the turbo stuff, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Come on guys, help me out. Let's get this party started. For building and testing our do-it-yourself single turbo kit for the 5 liter Mustang engine, we obviously needed a test motor. So we started off with basically a rebuilt short block from the guys at Marshall Engines. It was just a bare bones, minimum nothing kind of short block. It actually came as a long block, but we had replaced the cylinder heads on it. This was a cast crank, you know, <laughs> cast rods, cast pistons, just kind of a cheapy deal. Well, we didn't even put ring gap in this thing. So we, but we did replace a few things to get this thing to make more power because we weren't too worried about the stock components because we weren't going to be running a ton of power to it. So that wasn't really a problem, but we did want it to make some power and not just run the stock E7 TE heads and the stock HO camshaft and the stock like HO, you know, upper and lower intake manifold. So we didn't install that stuff. What we did do is put a set of blueprint as cast aluminum heads on it which flow well enough to make the, the power output that we wanted to make out of our modified five liter we also installed one of my favorite camshafts the extreme energy 274 hr cam from comp cams and i'll go ahead and put the specs up here but that 224 232 cam works really well and as we'll see it worked well as an na motor it worked well when we installed the nitrous which we're gonna which is coming right up and it also worked well when we installed the turbo, but by now we all know that if you have a camshaft like this, it works well as a nitrous motor, I mean nitrous cam, and it works well under boost because that's what camshafts do. So we had that camshaft, we had we had the comp cam, we had the blueprint uh, as cast aluminum heads. To that we added a, an upper and lower intake manifold from TrickFlow, their street burner intake. Long runner kind of deal, good for making power, you know, at 6,000 RPM and below and we fed that with a 70 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. The whole combination was run, run with a set of inch and three quarter long tube hooker Fox chassis headers like we kind of normally do on a 302. It had a Mazir electric water pump. We ran it with a Holly HP management system and an MSD distributor. Set of 80 pound Excel injectors because we wanted to make sure we had enough injector later on when we installed our custom turbo kit that we could run the boost up without fear of not having enough fuel. So equipped in that manner, our naturally aspirated 302 produced 386 horsepower and 374 foot-pounds of torque. We had a nice broad torque curve that worked out really well, but I'll show you what happened once we added the nitrous. Here is uh, from Nitrous Express. It was a single fogger nozzle from Nitrous Express and we had jetting in it to provide We had 100 horsepower jetting in it so that it would add 100 horsepower to our combination. Now it ended up adding a little bit more torque than that on the, on the initial hit, but that's kind of the spike when everything settles in. It was about, it, you know, it was about 100 horsepower gain. So it was a quick, easy kind of deal. It, it, it worked out really well. 
The single fogger nozzle was installed in an inlet tube that we mounted in front of the throttle body. And, but you could really put it anywhere in that induction system. You could put it in the throttle body, you could put it in the manifold. Personally, I like to have it in the inlet tube in front of the throttle body. So if for whatever reason the solenoids were to stick open and inject nitrous or fuel, if you still have the nitrous turned on, that you could just shut the throttle off and that stuff's not going to flow in there anymore. Because it, so it acts as another safety gap. That worked out well. Uh, on this kit, we did not take away any timing on this combination because we were running a 91 octane, it was pump gas, and although I would recommend that you do take timing away, it works better um, and it's probably safer. I've run lots and lots of stuff that, that's at the 100 horsepower level where we didn't take any timing away. Uh, we had a nice safe air fuel, it was about 11.8, and it worked out really good. Made good power, good combination. Nitrous usually works like this, so now let's take a look and see what happened after we <laughs> assembled our turbo kit and put it on the dyno. stock exhaust manifolds. Didn't be anything good going on here. And we'll follow it up over here. Look at that. Nice, nice. Over here. Yeah, that's a good sign. Turbo Smart Wastegate. eBay Turbo. Intercooler. Another wastegate, you know, just to make sure. Blow off valve. Tube. Turbo 5 liter junkyard. Well, you just gotta get the test done. Wait for it, wait for it. Had a little interference with the hose. Wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. After running nitrous, it was time for our turbo kit, and you saw in the previous videos, uh, you saw the thing running, and you also saw how we put this thing together uh, with the help of the guys at Topeat Mufflers. We did our, what I called our tailgate turbo, because I just took a motor over there on the stand and showed them what I needed. I had the exhaust uh, manifolds aimed up, and I brought in a suction of pipe, and I brought in the flanges and everything for them to just, hey, just make this fit to this, because I had a Y pipe that we already made that we use for a lot of LS stuff and, and big block Chevy stuff. So we had a white pipe that had the wastegates on it already and it had the flange to mount the turbo. And the way that I make those white pipes is I make the white pipe end in a V-band flange, that way a three inch V-band flange, that way I can adapt that V-band flange to really any size turbo we want. So then, then I make adapters that go from a V-band to either a T3 or a T4 or a T6, and I can put it on whatever turbo I want. So in this case, we did it with a T4 turbo and it worked out really well, and we did it with a cheap eBay turbo. So here is our naturally aspirated, uh, once again, our naturally aspirated through 302, 386 horsepower, 374 foot-pounds. Here's what happened after we installed, we installed the that eBay GT45 turbo and then our air to water intercooler from Procharger that we always use. You can use a cheap one from, from a lots of different sources on, online, but this is one that we already had, so we wanted to just use that. So here's what happened when we installed our turbo and we kind of snuck up on it. And the big dip that you see down at the bottom is we just like took all the timing out of it during the load in process for the, um, for the turbo. So we wanted to make sure that nothing got hurt on that load in process. So it was making no power down there. But you can see once the, once the thing spooled up and everything was working right, it started to make good power at, this is only like five and a half pounds. It was already at uh, 486 horsepower and 498 foot pounds of torque. So it was doing pretty well. And this is with a pretty soft tune, not a lot of timing. Cause again, we were worried about the motor and we didn't really want to hurt it. So 
Let's see. No, yeah, that still has the NA timing indicated on it. But here's what happened after we turned the boost up, because this is what you do if you have a turbo motor. You don't obviously start it or stop at five and a half pounds. We went up to six pounds again, more power. Peak power went up to 509 horsepower, 517 or 18 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened we went up to seven pounds, 527 horsepower. 528 foot-pounds of torque, and then to 7.8 pounds, 549, so right at 550 horsepower, and just, just over 550 foot-pounds of torque, 555 foot-pounds. So you can see that this thing, like it did when it was NA with the turbo, after we allowed it to have some timing from, from the down-low section, uh, the torque curve was nice and flat, just like it was NA. The power rose. Um, we started, the reason that you're not seeing this thing climb the way that the NA power did is we actually kind of have a falling boost curve on this combination. And I think that's probably a function of the way that we did our exhaust, maybe that particular turbo. I mean, we had more than enough wastegate on this. Um, so it, it's probably more than likely, and I didn't monitor back pressure on this when I was doing this test because I didn't have a provision for it when we were making this. But if we have, if we don't have a rising boost curve, and I would have run like an electronic controller on this, the boost curve, the, or the boosted power output, would basically just mirror the NA power output as long as I had enough timing in this thing. But we were even soft at the top too, because like I said, we were, <laughs> we had kids' gloves on. When we were making this thing. We didn't, we didn't really want to split this block. We knew if we kept going, especially at the kind of torque levels that we're at, that we were going to get into the problem area really quick. But this kind of shows you what's possible with a junkyard turbo system, a do-it-yourself homemade thing. This had those factory exhaust manifolds on it. It had some cheapy white pipes uh, that we made up basically from the leftover used tubing that you can go get from any muffler shop or even from the wrecking yard. So there's nothing glamorous about it, but obviously it works. And it will work in your chassis, just like it worked on this engine dyno. All you have to do is make it fit. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our custom do-it-yourself single turbo setup. Yes, I know you're upset that I didn't run it to 9,000 horsepower, but that really wasn't the point. What I was trying to show you that it's easy to build your own turbo system. In fact, you can do this not just for a five liter Mustang, you can do it for any motor, even with stock cast iron exhaust manifolds, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is route all that exhaust to a turbo. Of course, it all has to fit in the engine compartment, but you should be able to do that and make it all happen. That way, everybody can enjoy the benefits of Boost. I'm Richard Holdner, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep the videos coming.